everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 10th C Sharp tutorial. I'm just going to make a console application. Today we're going to talk about lists. And to do that, we're going to have to talk about namespaces a little bit. Now, you see this keyword namespace? What does that mean? Well, remember, we've kind of talked about this briefly, where a namespace is like an apartment. And you can only have one person of one name in an apartment. Notice how this is console application one. There can only be one console application one apartment and there is a program in the console application one apartment. So what this does is it separates things. So if you make a class or a blueprint and let's say you make a class called cat because I like cats and somebody else makes a class called cat well that's going to be a name conflict. So you have to put them in separate namespaces that way someone would go to your namespace and use your cat class or their namespace and use their cat class. Well, you see all these using? These are all namespaces. So you've been using this all along and never known it. System, that's the core system of .NET. Um, system collections generic, that's something we're going to be working with today. System link, uh, we'll cover that in the future. And system.txt, that deals with text processing. So you're using namespaces. Now, what we want to do is make a list. So if you type in list, and you notice how it's got these less than and greater than signs and it's got this thing and these and these. What, what is all this stuff? Well these are collections. They're also called generics. And just select list with the little brackets and then if it doesn't pop up type the bracket. Notice how it says system collections generic list T. T is the type of elements in the list. Well give it a type. String in this case and then in bracket. Now we have to give it a name. This is just a variable we're making here. So we're going to say customers equal new and then you have to give it the end brackets at the end there. So this looks very complicated but let's review it. List, so we're making a list object. The type of things that go in the list is a string. So we're saying this is a list of strings. We're calling it customers and then it's going to be equal new list of strings and then we give it the constructor something we haven't talked about yet just kinda click the I believe button so what is a list well a list is like an array in the sense that it holds multiple objects you can say maybe if I could type customers dot add and then you can add a string item and we'll just say we're gonna add Bob in here Then customers add Mary add and I'm just gonna pick a name at random here. We're just gonna say Chad. So this looks very similar to what we discussed with the array. Why would we use a list? I mean it's got this funky looking syntax that's really hard to follow. Why would you use that instead of an array? Well, simple. Lists are much, much more powerful. An array, you hit an upper limit and you stop. You can't add any more. You'd have to make a bigger array and then copy the items to it. With a list, you can just keep growing and growing and growing. You can also do things like customers.insert. So you can actually insert something into the list at a specific index. So we're going to just, uh, we'll say at the second spot, we're going to insert Heather. So if you're following along here, this would be 0, this would be 1, 2, and then we want to insert at the second spot. So actually right here is where we're going to add Heather. So let's just say for each string customer in customers and we're going to do a console right line customer and then of course we want our console read line that way we keep the window open here and let's go ahead and run this 
And sure enough, we have Bob, Mary, our inserted item of Heather, and Chad. That's something you really can't do with an array. Arrays are, are kind of old school, very rigid, very difficult to work with. And to be honest, arrays are kind of, I want to say they're going the way of the dinosaur, but they'll be around for a long time for legacy reasons. But as you can see, a list is much, much more flexible. Now, the thing about lists is you can also make it with other things. This is also kind of a tutorial on generics here. Remember when you do list and then you have that T, you could have very easily typed int for integer. And we'll say, uh, I don't know, let's just call this ages equal new. And then you could say, oops, ages.add. And you could just add a 10. And you kind of get the drift here. I mean, you can just, you know, till your heart's content, just start adding things. There's no upper limit, no upper bounds. Um, you'll just keep going and going and going. And because you give it this type, you know what type of objects it expects and what type of objects you're going to get back. For example, um, when we say for each string, customer and customers, if we change this to an int, notice how it gets kind of angry at us. It says, whoa, cannot convert type string to int. Because remember, customers is a bunch of strings. So it knows, hey, we're expecting a string here, not an int. Why is that important? Well, that's important because if you try to get an integer out of a name, say Bob, Bob is not a number. So you're going to crash your program. So it does this type checking to make sure that your program is going to be more stable. So that, in a nutshell, is the bare bones basic of lists and generics. And remember, that is coming out of the system.collections.generic namespace. This is Brian. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial educational and entertaining.